Hello friends, it's me, Cynthia. Azalea is in the background. Hello. And sorry we're late today. I'm a little frazzled. Things take me longer than I always think it's going to. It's one of those things that is the bane of my life, is getting on track at the time I'm supposed to be. It's, it's probably one of the hardest things for me is is time management. I think that's probably the same with a lot of people out there is keeping track of things and figuring out how long something's gonna take you know I find that I'm always overestimating how fast I can do something and it's I'm never as fast as I think I am. I'm like oh that will only take me 10 minutes and Azalea's like mom to get ready, you need like an minutes. hour to, to leave the house because I'll like set my wallet down, I'll set my keys down, and I'll walk around and do a circuit, and then I'll find, oh, I need to close the windows. Oh, I need to turn off the lights. And by the time I'm supposed to be anywhere, it's always like, oh, I'm so frantic. I'm always surprised. Yes, time is a construct, Colite. I agree with you. I, I like to think of that too. I'm like, it's just an illusion. Somebody came up with it, you know. Oh, hello, our friend June. Hello, June. Linda. Hello, Cherie. Hello, Susan. Thank you all for joining us this evening. I'm going to show you... Okay, so you all know this epic adventure of rearranging my studio for the past five years or so, however long it's been since I decided to do this. And I've been finding things left and right. I bought a felting machine. I don't know. I, it said, if you find yourself doing more than four hours of felting, this is the machine for you. And so I was like, okay, you know, and I bought it at this thing called the Southeastern Animal Fiber Festival called SAF. And I played with it last night for the first time. I just got it and I was like, man, this thing, I'm like cooking with gas now. And I bought this book called Felting Land Wool Landscapes, and I will show you. I'm going to show you the whole thing of what I got and how I'm going to go get it. All right. So I played with it last night, and this is this is a piece of like foam, and so I did this little landscape. It's on craft felt. Let's see, this is the. Oh! Sorry, that's, you know, I'm going to get another. I've been, this is my favorite tripod, but it falls down all the dang time. Because it's like octopus legs and they, they tilt. So anyway, this is the landscape that I did. You can see it's on craft felt and it's punctured from behind. And I bought a book not that long ago. called landscapes and wool this lady's local she's in weaverville and if you can believe it these are all wool i guess they're you know i don't know how to just they're like on um they're like this and she frames them and really cool like wooden type frames that are kind of reclaimed wood it's pretty neat so anyway, I started doing this, and usually you go when she is saying use one needle, and you go in and you puncture it like this. It's a stabbing motion. I'm going to flip the camera around so you can see what happens when I plug in. This is a barbed. See, it has these little kind of cuts, like faceting almost. And those little pieces that kind of stick out, they grab the wool and it compresses it with every time you go in. So you kind of like a sewing machine or, or like a tattoo gun. And I'm gonna show you this cool thing that I got. It's awesome. Well, first, first what I found, I went to an estate sale the other day. My friend Joanne, she emails me, she goes, listen, there's, a, there's an estate sale coming up in Hendersonville. It's like 45 minutes away with traffic. And I got these, look at this. They're called carters. So they have this kind of like clawed looking, kind of like big giant Velcro that the hooking part. And 
This is what you use to mix different colors of wool. I have a small set. Oh, I'm going to demo this because it's pretty fun. It's my favorite. I love it. So this is a color of wool. They're hand dyed. It's called it's like Merino. And this is called a bat. Folks have probably seen this. I got this at SAF too. Somebody made this with their sheep. Their, you know, they dyed the different colors and then carded it on this, one of these things, and made it back. This was probably used like a drum carter that spins. It has those teeth on it, and you can keep feeding this in there and making different colors. And that's what I use to make that landscape. Yeah, it's kind of like a cat brush, but you know what? It's sharp. It's real sharp. So I'm going to maybe I turn the camera around so you can see this. It's pretty cool. All right. Give me one second. All right, so to mix colors, I've been mixing, I kind of went hog wild on this landscape and it made kind of a weird colorway, but it's still kind of fun. I'm gonna move this stuff around. Here's some colors that I mixed last night. Because that's kind of my favorite part is mixing these up into different blends i was doing it with this i'll show you how i did the um how i started it it's like this at the top you know what that landscape was like this first and then i busted out this bat full of all those different colors and it went wild fast all right and look at this this is a silk and merino bat or roving I guess you call it it's roving so if you're gonna mix a color this is the fun part I love doing this all right so let's take a little bit of this and mix it maybe we'll mix this with I don't know what do you think I should mix this with to make a color blend that would would really showcase these colors as all yeah That's a good question. You're the color master. Mm. I see you've got um, shades of blue and purple, and then you have some green in there. So let's take this. Let's try it with a little bit of this kind of fluffy white. It's not really white. It's like cotton candy. Look at all these cloud colors. I was You could tell I was in the mood to do clouds. If you looked closely, you could say I mixed that with a bunch of each individual strand is a bunch of different colors. Like this is kind of a plush. I think it has silk in it. It has a really good cottony feel to it. But this is wool. And I have all this because I went through a phase where I was making a lot of felted animals and different sorts of projects with felt hats and things so those are the colors oh oh donna hey donna i was looking at your beads the other day getting ready to make jewelry it takes me forever to make jewelry because i'm one of those people i don't know if anybody else is like this but when i'm making jewelry i need to clean off my desk i need to clean off everywhere around it and then, then I can move forward. But in the meantime, it's like I just collect. I was so happy. I got this set. I found it at that estate sale for 20 bucks. These usually sell for like 100 I have a smaller one. It might be better you use the smaller one in this kind of confined space. I got the bigger size so I could have a little more surface area to mix. Now you can run this in the same direction, but I'm kind of making it sort of fluffy. Like, if you were to use these to spin, which I'm not going to, I have a little spinning wheel. It's a, a little small 
called a spindle, a drop spindle. And I took a class and I realized, I was like, okay, so I made maybe 10 feet of yarn in about two hours with this spindle. I was like, I'm patient, but I'm not that patient. That's too much. It's kind of a, kind of a, I like that sound it makes, that crunching. So some people will roll them like this. You roll it, you roll it and roll it. And then from that rolled, you could take that and spin it. That's what you would use to spin. And so this is, I could keep blending this and make it really smooth. But you can see from that pink and white what kind of fluffy color. I like it when it's not too mixed. It kind of gets me in the mood to just like needle felt this. Needle felting is kind of magical. There's wet felting and there's needle felting. Wet felting is when you use water and a little bit of heat and agitation. Like you would, kind of like how you would put a sweater in the washing machine and then accidentally shrink it and then it fits a child. Mm -hmm. That's wet or felting. A or a cat. Exactly so. All right, so doesn't that look cool? I'm gonna show you how to use that now. I'm gonna plug this thing in. There's the end of it. With my new Addy felting machine. It's new because I didn't get take it out of the package for a couple of years. Get this stuff out of the way. All right. There's a... Now, This is a piece of foam on that, like a dense piece that was $5 apparently. And one needle, you can do, this one has lots of needles. How many is in there? I see seven, I think. There's probably room for a couple more, but if you put your hand in there, you would have, you would be awake for sure. So this is to smooth it out. I was using this on it last night to give it a good smooth over. And you can see it has, if you use this one single needle, it's like a detail felter. Kind of slow. Watch this. This is cooking with gas right here. So this is the Addy Quick. I'm going to turn it on. So the needle is in, inside. It's only one needle. So I'm going to add something to this. So I have this. Kind of landscape and was building it up and doing in my mind i was gonna have like a sunset type thing and then add so that these colors would kind of peek through it got a little wild so i'm gonna try using some of this fluff here to to give it a little less of uh you know a little it's a little fantastic let's see some of this i mixed this up this is kind of a soft bunch of purples and blues to get that oh that's terrible Sheree of, of having your sweater ruined I would hate that story but I can see it's it's some of these things are hard to know how to take care of I accidentally shrunk one of my cashmere sweaters it was not cashmere I found it was like a loosely done angora all right Sometimes silk, I, I don't want to use a ton of silk because it makes kind of a wormy look. Maybe I'll put that to the side. All right, let's pin that down. All right, turn this on. Now this makes a weird sound. Okay, I'm going to lift this up a little because we're not supposed to go. It's supposed to go up and down. I'm kind of coming at it at an angle because the camera's in the my phone is in the way. And I'm using... So if you do this with it, it's almost like a tattoo gun.
that thing makes a kind of a horrendous noise. And to smooth it out, I go over it with this multiple tool to kind of disguise those big puncture marks. Now, you don't want to go too deep. I was only going maybe, I was holding it kind of at an angle and I could see how far. But if you go too deep, you can really attach it. So you only need to really push in like that far, maybe a quarter of an inch. And for detail, like I would add, so in this book, she has little tree branches and, and things like that. I'm going to flip through this. It's pretty fun. I met this gal at the Weaverville Art Festival. Well, when was that? Last summer? And we bought this book. These are really very small. That's probably, oh, 11 by 11. Hmm. They seem smaller. Oh, that's the whole thing. So the inside image is probably like maybe 10 by 10. They seem very small to me. I was pretty amazed at how much detail she was able to get with, uh... oops. I wanted to do some trees. And the way that, that she does those, I think this is particularly good, that sunset. I was gonna do a similar type thing. Maybe find a picture. I was just practicing, you know. That was a particularly good one. There's a good sense of light. Basically painting with wool roving. Or wool... Wool felt, I guess. Yeah, I like them too, Cherie. They're really pretty. Has all the full directions in there of how to make the trees and everything. And really, I already knew how to felt... But, you know, it's fun to have it right in front of you, to have directions and things of their particular techniques. Her way of, of making these sort of long branches is pretty cool, like this. That's pretty neat. Maybe I'll try that. I had a piece of black in here. You should see my collection of wool I compulsively buy every time I go to SAF I get a little more this is not black I don't see that black this is pretty close no nah, that's not close here we have some black here we'll pick some off of this and make a, a branch this all right. Oh, thank you, Sheree. I like the moonlight with trees, too. We'll see if I can get some of that pink out of there. Doesn't hurt. We'll leave that in. So it looks like she does this sort of twisting action to make forms like the sculptural forms i suppose i could go over this a little more let me see we'll tack that down i thought for you know it's funny we were all trying to needle felt when azalea was being born <laughs> Because we had just discovered it, and it was like a way to pass time. It took like five or six hours to birth her. That's so crazy. <laughs> I know. And my sister was like trying to felt uh, like, a, like a teddy bear for you. Because we were all like waiting for me, like walking around in labor. And I could hear them. They were so nerve-wracked because Azalea was the first kid born first grandkid and first niece born on our in our family and so everybody was waiting around for me to give birth and to entertain them i was like let's learn needle felting and so they're like okay and greg was helping like have showing everybody what to do he was passing stuff to the midwife and we were like you know, while I was walking around pacing, we were felting. 
I've never heard this story before. Oh, well, that's what we did. We were felting. And you were breached. You were facing the wrong way. You were trying to come out feet first. So I called my chiropractor. And he came over. We were, this is home birth now. This is Asheville, y'all. So none of what I'm saying would be shocking to anybody that's like in Asheville. But when I was telling some of my relatives, they're like, uh, we have modern hospitals. <laughs> Pretty funny. Oh, felted mice. I love felted mice. It's cute. I wanted to make these. I thought it'd be fun to bead them, too. You know, wouldn't that be cool, like, seed beads in there or something? I think so. I've seen people do that, I think. Mm-hmm. That crunchy sound it makes when it's going through there is kind of satisfying. That looks pretty good. It's a little bit cheesy, but you know, it's pretty, it looks pretty good. It's not cheesy, it looks good. I wonder what I can, I have so many things that I could use to put this little thing in. You know, those, and the, that gal, she uses all kind of scrap wood and bowls and things, trays, it looked like. Well, it's kind of like poking styrofoam because I have a rig I have a piece of foam that I'm using, so that's probably why it has that crunchy. I like that sound. I know me too. Kind of satisfying. Yeah, you know, that's the thing about when you're when you start organizing, you start finding stuff you forgot you had, which has been cool. I've been finding things like projects from my book, jewelry that I made a long time ago been pretty fun we've been doing the whole house yeah that's looking good maybe I'll add something to this bottom part maybe it'll have like I feel like it's very forgiving we're working on a TV pilot and on puppetry and azalea had the good idea she was like you should do a scene with felted like a felted all everything is felted and i was like yeah that would be pretty cool i think it'd be real cool this sale tonight better go crazy got three trays oh yeah we found a lot of good stuff and we had a thing from our gemstone guy so that was pretty good. I had a, a big box that I haven't yet gone through. And I went through a little bit of it today. So it's pretty cool. Or maybe a mouse house. You know, I used to read this book to Azalea. Do you remember that book, Azalea? Mouse's house? The house that Mouse built? Yeah, that was a cute book. Yeah, that was an adorable book. If you're looking, if you need a good kids book, the the mouse, the house that Mouse built is extremely charming. Vicky, felting supplies are one of those things you get it out every once in a while, but these landscapes are good because you know what, you don't use a lot of wool. If you don't have a ton and you don't want to make like three D things, this is pretty fast, actually, because this is craft felt on the back side of it, and it's. You know, I don't have this, you don't have to felt it hard, meaning you don't have to make it so that it stands up to rigorous use. Like some things, if you're going to felt, you know how Gail Crosman Moore makes jewelry with her felting? You got to felt that pretty stiff so that it doesn't come apart because it's going to be worn. Or like a felt hat. You got to felt it where it's compacted and you don't have pieces coming out of it you know like it's like fluffy or whatever sometimes it can be too fluffy i collect felted animals when we go to the big crafty there's a gal that makes felted taxidermy and i always get a little something from her i have a little tiger head and a unicorn head they're really cute
Oh, we forced folk. Yeah, Shuri, um, Azalea went through a phase of making we forced folk. That was how she bought her iPad. Is sell making and selling those. Yeah, this is looking pretty good. What I what I use, I'll do this like the way I would make a painting. Is you want to get your shadows in, and then come in and bring in your highlights. So really, I don't have a picture. I'm just sort of doing something here. You know, I should get a, one of my photos and get out something for reference. But, you know, it's kind of uh, therapeutic just to mix colors. And this is really very little wool that I'm using. So this is actually, you know, if you've looked at wool, like crafting with it, and thought, wow, it's kind of expensive. It can be. But if you do small projects, I feel like it goes, It you know, like this is a pretty small project. And I lift it up pretty frequently so that it's not pinned down too hard. And I'll trim around the edge. I feel like this area could use some lighting up. It's like the push and pull between dark and light, getting that a good balance. And the single needle is good to get in there and pick out highlights. I've made a bunch of different types of things with felt. It's pretty fun. Oh, right, Mary, this is kind of a Tucson sunset. You know, it's also kind of an Asheville one. We had one the other day that it was like brilliant pink. The skies here in Asheville aren't like other places. I feel like they're more, the, the cerulean blue is not like anywhere else. Probably all the isopene from the pine trees. Giving it. That's why it's called the Blue Ridge, because they release these gases into the atmosphere. They give the sky that bluish color. Yeah, that part is a little bit bright. We'll go in and, and give it a little bit more realism. But it gives it a good glow to have that peaking. could use a felting or after this you could use I've used a pill shaver and shaved off the top so it looked a little more tidy I'm looking good kind of a watercolory look yes colite exactly watercoloring with wool I would say so This needle, they come in a bunch of different gauges. Some are more aggressive. Like this one is more of a detail. There's not as many points. Let me see if I have... This is my box of needles. What happens if you wet it? You can, uh, you can make it flatter and wet felt it. I was just looking around to see if I had anything wet felted in here, but I brought most of my felting things downstairs. So here are some, oh, those are eyes. Oh, and then needles. These are all different kinds of needles. I should have painted them. So now, sometimes they put a little bit of red or paint on them so you can see what's what. I don't know if you can see that. If I'll try to glint the light to show that they're this one has a lot of little burrs to catch the wool. And so that one, that actually felt a little tighter. So we'll get that one out. I also have some that are designed to pull out. Oh, so here they have them labeled on this. Reverse barb. And the reverse barbs will pull out. When you go in, it pulls fiber out. And that's how you can do... 
fur on these. I do like that sound that it makes. If I did a little mountain range, which it's, which it's not too late to do, I could maybe do that. Detail that. I have often stabbed myself because I insist on putting my fingers in harm's way. So if you were to wet felt this, you could get, you would use, I have bubble wrap. And if you wet felt it, it would be like a more uniform surface. And it would just look more professional, you know. Like tidier. The surface would be tidier, I think. Like clothes. You know, like boiled wool. That's a good. Boiled wool is felted wool. I don't know if you noticed, but it is pink outside right now. It is pink? Yeah, it's like a pink filter over the whole world. Mm. Yeah, we do get pink sunsets here. See, that's one good thing about Asheville. Earlier I was thinking, I was seeing something on Facebook. People were complaining about the traffic. I was like, there's a lot to like. Yes, there's a housing crisis, but Asheville, you know, is still... The reason and people like it is because it's real pretty. Oh, Azalea, can you drop the link while I'm thinking of it? So, the drop a link to Kate has that retreat that we are going to be going to in august and it went live i don't know if there's no i actually check it before you drop it because i might be saying it and it might already be sold out she was like drop this if it's not sold out and she's like last time it sold out in one day so i don't know oh it says it's full oh okay wow when I last looked, it was not full. It is full now. I found it. 2024 Bead Retreat, Color Your World, August 16th, 19th, 2024. Mm-hmm. It's full. All right. Well, wow. Awesome. I know. That's nice. Yay. But I bet there, if, uh, there might be a wait list because there's oftentimes people that drop out for whatever reason. So... If there's a wait list and you're interested, I would get on that wait list because I think last time she told me that if a couple of people dropped out, we are going to another retreat on at the end of this month in Montreat, which is only like 30 minutes away. It's a fiber retreat. And last time I did, we did dyeing. I dyed the socks that I'm wearing right now. I think it's next weekend. Oh, are you sure? I'm pretty sure. <laughs> well, we should find out. But you know what? Even if it is, it, it, it ends on Sunday, so we will still have our Sunday evening live. Yeah, I marked it on my calendar. I'm 99% sure it's next weekend. Oh, and Thea says her sister has a house in Montreal. I love that area. It's really beautiful. We've shot many videos on that trail, many, many videos, because it's really beautiful. And I saw a bunch of salamanders floating around swimming in this retention pond. So Montreat has a soft, I have a soft spot for that area. Look at this. It's looking watercolory. Uh, one of the things that I tend to do is put every color that I know exists and try and get it in there. It's hard for me to buckle down and not add too much. But I think it looks good, you know? You can always uh, kind of add colors on top of other ones. See how I did here? I had that yellow, but adding that little bit of pink over top of it gave it a neat, a neat uh, kind of glow, as it were. You know, if you've ever painted with uh, layers, they call it glazing. I feel like that's a kind of a glazing technique. So I have a bunch of different blues and greens and the bot in the background, and it just adds to the dimensional quality of the piece. I'm gonna add more in there. That tree is looking like it's like becoming invisible. 
and add back in. We are working on our studio so that we can open it up for workshops and retreats. I had someone ask me, what's the difference between a workshop and a retreat? And I feel like the main difference between a workshop is that a workshop seems to me more like productivity. Like you're going to, you're going to get something out of the end of it. You know, you're going to learn how to do enameling and, or whatever it is you're going to do. And it's kind of focused on learning a, t a technique. Ooh, I almost went sideways with that and broke my needle. Sometimes that happens if you if you're too aggressive. Oh, Wendy, yes, I was going to. So the thing about a retreat is more the experience of being in the company with other people. You're getting like you're getting the feeling of company and that energy. So it's community, with like community, exactly. Thank you. So you're not really focused on finished objects. It's more about being in the company of people that you like and maybe learning a technique or two, but it's really more relaxed. Although I feel like with the retreat that Kate and I were talking about, there's a, there is a lot of, of both. Like you get the the feeling of community and your learning too. So that's the good part about that. Yeah, and also having the ideas. So we were talking about having something like that here in the studio. I used to do different retreat type things, workshops. We did some on blogging back in the day when that was popular and some um, wax work I've taught that many times people come here and say oh I'd like to learn how to do you know make a ring and so we would work on that for a couple of days I'd get a, a small group I think the most I had in here was six and it's a lot of fun a friend of mine named Zach, he's out of uh, Pittsburgh. We were talking about, we were just texting. He's going to come visit and practice his wax carving. So that's pretty exciting. He'll be one of my first students of the year. Oh, yes, it is a lot of work, Pat. Hello, Deanna. Yeah, if you will, I will start opening it up. We were talking about it, and the studio is coming along. We just have a little bit more to go, like figuring out the uh, the seating and what's comfortable. Lighting and seating. You don't need a very big space, and we can move things around to accommodate. But um, it's on my things to do. That's what we're, we're hoping to accomplish this summer, is opening up the studio and teaching it is a lot of work, but I have been in the mood for it. We have had our own kind of mini workshops here with friends around town. We've had some young people, our friends that have younger daughters. They're like 12. We're teaching fun crafts, sewing, that type of thing. Now I have the option to have more highlights put in. Right now I've been kind of doing kind of, sort of a silhouette look, which is kind of like if you were to look outside, it's kind of, you don't see a lot of too much color. These would be probably a more darker purpley color against that, against that. So maybe I can twist some of that in there as like, that's a, this is a case where I would want to blend that dark color. So some of those branches would have that, you know, like the, the, how the light would hit that. That'd be really pretty. Maybe I'll mix that up. I love this here. That piece. Oh, here it is. Here it is. 
Like, what did I mix? All these piles. The push and pull of light and dark. Yeah, so you see, look, I'm using such small amounts of wool. It's very little on this piece. Let's pick this up. Let's flip it over and have a look at it. That's what the back side kind of reminds you of a Biore strip, doesn't it? Biore strip. <laughs> what do you think, Azalea? I think that looks awesome. You should frame it and put it in your house. Oh, thank you. Thank you. That yellow is a little loud. I kind of want to put it right across that bottom. And blend up this color. Isn't this pretty? It's like unicorn. I want to make a unicorn with this. I don't know if the color... Does that show up of how sparkly that is? This is sparkly. If you looked really close, you could see that it's made of all these strands of, of pastel pink and white. There's so much stuff over here. You may have to make some space. Oh, you've been going for 40 minutes already. Oh, wow. That time flies. I hope you guys weren't bored watching me mix this uh, wool. I have these smaller card, like fiber carders to make a, I wanted to blend a really pretty soft. Kind of a golden, get that light. Yeah, I know. I need to go. I need to get the lead out because we have a couple of we have a bunch of stuff to show. All right, so I have this really pretty soft. I'm going to go in there very sparingly and highlight that because it's pretty bright. I didn't the this is the base. The green felt is a base. This could have been any color. It's a little sparkly. I think it looks good though. It's called fantasy fiber, Angelina's fantasy fiber. Some folks, they're local, they blend their wool. This is not really, we know a gal. We went to her workshop. She's in town, she has Angora goats. It was really fun to pet the goats and to get. You getting back into the felt? We gotta get. We gotta get. Oh, I know. I'm. I keep. I'm like. I'm getting in there. All right. All right. All right. All right. All right. All right. So that is. If you look, you can see that there's a lot of. There's a lot of potential with this. So it could be framed, or and this is what I thought was kind of cool. It could be embroidered too. So if you have a if you have a sewing machine that does machine embroidery, you could go over top of this, or you could do just regular hand embroidery. And you know that's uh you know you can put that I think on a bag, wouldn't you think? You could beat it. You could make a cuff. Imagine that as a cuff. You know, like this. I don't know. Came out good. I like it. I'm going to add more, I think. The two looks a little... Like something needs to be happening in here, don't you think? And maybe some highlights. Or or maybe even... I don't know. Something needs to happen in here. Feels kind of blank. All right. I'm going to put some of this wool away. If you could feel this, it's so soft. Feels awesome. That's one of the fun things about wool felting is the tactile quality. I really should have shown some of the fun things I've made with wool felt. I have a bunch of projects that I've made over the years. So I'm going to start putting this stuff away. Lots of it. All right. You know, I put these in. All of my stuff fits in these great big tubs 
and they're super lightweight. There's like so much you should see them. I'm gonna, I'm gonna show you this. Look at this. So look at this thing. I had. It's for putting storing quilts and stuff in it, but it, I can lift it with one hand, and I just keep putting these pieces in here. And when I need a color, really, what I should do is go in and organize this a little better, so that it's easier to find different colors and I did do that at one point and the fun thing is is this thing weighs like five pounds and it's chock full look how big it is it's full of it's full of wool all right get over there you and this doesn't this look like cotton candy exactly and one of these times, I'm gonna I'm gonna show you guys wet felting. That is, I love wet felting with all my heart. I could do that all day long. And in fact, I have. That I've made booties and things. It's so fun. Unplug that. All right. Okay, Zoya, let's do this. I use this thing to brace it because it's just the right height. Whoa, that looks weird, that rainbow on the screen. Oh, uh, man down. I heard some beads go off the rails. I just heard it. Okay, so I'm going to get this thing. Here's a little thing. This has got millimeters and such on it. How about this little thing? Oh, you want to drop that? Start talking about Azalea made it a graphic. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. She's gonna drop that in there and figure that out. All right, so we're about to begin on our live sale, and Azalea has some notes. Read it out there, daughter. They're not gonna be able to hear me from over here. Oh, well. So I'm you trying to read this. For anybody that's new. If we got any new people today, this this applies to you. Everybody else probably knows what to do by now. Mm -hmm. Well, here is the next page. Okay, so she's got the next thing. Just, Azalea, read it. I can't read it. Nobody's going to be able to hear me from over here. Then walk over. Am I reading the first page or the second page? Do you want me to change it? Well, you know, just tell people. Give them the rundown because I can't read it. Okay, so if anybody here is new, I had four separate little notes here. Uh, I mentioned how you can bid on an item and what will happen when you do. You'll receive an invoice by email. That was the first page. Second page here is that if you have not shopped with this before, or I might not know your email, if your name is different from your name that you use to buy from us, it's going to be hard for me to find you. Like if you have like a nickname on Facebook and that's where you're from where you're commenting, then I might not be able to find you so easily. So when in doubt, you can email me at the email there underneath step three. And the last one is, uh, you know, this one is not so it's not that big of a deal for people. Most people are pretty good about this, but occasionally we'll have we'll have friends come on here that will uh, that will bid on things, and so we mark it out of the inventory. So when somebody else asks for it, we say, "Oh, I'm sorry, we don't have that because somebody else picked it." But if you do not pay for it, then it kind of sometimes if it doesn't turn into an order, it can become confusing because then people are still asking, hey, is that available? And I'm like, I don't know. <laughs> we're don't, waiting to see. We're waiting to see if this is going to be available or if this person is going to pay for it. Hmm. Um, so, yeah, that's uh, that's about it. That's all, right, all we got in there. And there you go. There's my graphic. Yay. You did my a good job. Nice graphic, daughter. Very nice. All right. Let's see. What's the first thing? Let's do this juicy sunstone. What do you think? You can do it. Start anywhere. I could start anywhere. So I have a bunch of stuff to show y'all. This is check this sunset colored sunstone. Oh, our friend Clem is on. Hey, Clem. I was just thinking about you the other day. All right. This is lot. What does it say? Nine twenty-five, daughter. Yeah. Nine twenty-five. It's twenty-four dollars. Look at all this goodie. 
this is some of the nicest flashiest when i say flash i'm talking about the shiller that is the play of color and light on the surface now a lot of times you'll get sunstone that's kind of like it looks a little bit like moonstone so i have four of these 925 look how good that is these are excellent quality especially look at this it's like glitter very glittery nicely drilled this is medium soft flex see that so the holes are pretty generously drilled which is which is one of my favorite things because guess what i hate it when there's when there's a very very small hole because then you fight with it and it's not as useful all right is that sold out daughter yep all right awesome i'm gonna put some of this stuff to the side and move things around here oh i'm gonna show you this in a second in a second too many things to show oh azalea just did these cubes these are neat cubed pre-night i have five of them they're 14 dollars 928 those are strong on medium soft legs yeah, this is medium also, so they have a nice hole. I like that shape. I like a, a gemstone in an interesting shape. Yeah, me too. These are neat. Um, I've heard people say they don't know what to do with them. Uh, I would use these. And here's a necklace that I made. This is flipping ancient, so bear with me. Look at this. It's so old. I've used kind of cubed beads right up in here. And... Here's the necklace. This is using. Did you say the lot number? Oh, did I? I don't know. Uh, Nine twenty-eight, fourteen dollars, and they have a kind of a, a faceted quality. I mean, they're cubed, but they have the flat panels give it almost like a sequin. These are not as well. These are really not great quality on this. You can see it's, it doesn't have quite the same sparkly effect. But I would do these with earrings because there are, you would get away with like one and you could use a head pin. I have some head pins. I would do it like maybe not even a head pin. I think what I would do on that is like a drop almost or a stack. I had a pair of earrings that I made with a stack and that was really pretty. Cubed pre-night, $14. It's nine twenty-eight. Thank you. Is that done, Azalea? Um. Oh, hey, Carla, send me an email if, um, because I didn't see an email or maybe Azalea. I didn't see an email. I didn't see one. So send me another one. Send me another one. It can't hurt. It doesn't hurt anything. Okay, so this one, I'm going to put this aside. These are emeralds. There's only one of these left. $24. $8.17. These are really good. These were from... This is what we picked up in Tucson, and I bought several strands of this, and I had a couple left. So this is the last one of that lot. This is eight seventeen, twenty four dollars. They are they're showing up. I don't know if they show on, like the light on that. Let me see if I can get that to be a little. Sometimes if you don't have the direct light on it, if it's like reflected, it actually shows a little better than when I have it like this. It almost gives it a. Yeah, does that show the light or the color a little better? It's very pretty. Oh, well. It's also sold. Oh, okay. Perfect. All right. So what is this? What is this? Oh, this is a this is a pre-night that's in the heliotrope colorway. $7.46 for $14. These are a really cool shape. These also have just like moonstone they have that kind of uh what like that cat's eye quality that chatoyance so this is 746 14 dollars and it's called the heliotrope color because it's very much like that now the heliotrope is like a golden like kind of a peachy sort of it's in that kind of warmer 
Now, Prenite usually is this color. Well, that's kind of the same. This is more greenish. You usually see it green. And there's some green on this. In this light, it's yellowish greenish colored. Kind of like liquid sunshine. A very sunny color. So there's five of those. $14. Oh, and then I love this. This is this is good times right here. Okay, so this is eighteen dollars lot nine twenty six, and they look dark. But this is called this is an interesting stone. It's called indigo apatite, and it's a really kind of a teal, yet in the light it's almost it reminds me of indicolite sapphire or indicolite tourmaline. I mean, it's that same sort of teal. This could be. Indicolite, I would think. Now I'm going to show you what that looks like. It's a similar cut to that. Mm -hmm. It is. It's a very similar cut. All right. So an indicolite tourmaline, that's this colorway. And even then, see, you don't ever get a lot of it. It's one of the most rare colors in tourmaline. How many of those it's, do you have? Of this, I think four of them. I have four. So this is not like, I wouldn't consider this super top grade, grade A. I would consider this probably B grade, but the color is what makes this really, really juicy. In this light, it looks really dark, but in the sun, let me see if I can get the light. I don't know if that helps. That kind of makes it look like where it's almost silhouette. So I'm going to point that right back up at the ceiling and it's like, the light can kind of bounce on the ceiling onto this. Is that good, Azalea? Yeah. I would match this with... Oh, Carla, if you have a new email that has not gotten a lot of action, there's a chance that it can go to a spam. Like, it mm. Spam, and then it'll go to our, our junk mail folder instead of the main inbox. So I'll go ahead and check that for you. Mm. But we don't we don't think you're a bum. Don't worry. Oh no, I would never think that. I know sometimes email can get lost. So I know what that's like to get hacked. It's okay. Ugh. Yeah, it that sucks. did happen to you. Yeah, look at how good that looks with bronze. Doesn't it look pretty. Or my favorite is anything to do with this color. I would say this with it because this is watermelon tourmaline. I'm going to show you this in a second. And that's the indigo light colorway. So this is indigo appetite. But look at it with, if you put it with garnet. Isn't that delightful? Or rose quartz. I would love that together. Or this. Look at this, how juicy this is. You have how many of that 926? I have more. I only strung up four, though. So that's $18. And they are... Slightly graduated, not a ton of gra of uh, they're slightly. Look, what size is that? Let's see. Probably between. Let's see. Look like five mil, six millimeter to probably like eight or ten. All right. What's next? Let's just do what I have in my hand. There you go. <laughs> All right, so this is chrysoprase. I love chrysoprase. I love it so much. It looks just like Peruvian opal. Peruvian opal is this. This is Peruvian opal. Right there's a little piece of it. Just happened to be on that necklace. And you can see Peruvian has a little bit of a sky blue cast to it so when you look at it this chrysoprase looks very much like peruvian opal it's a really delightful color now the most expensive type of, of chrysoprase is this color right in here you're looking for that apple sort of fresh spring green color these lean more towards a bluish green they are faceted rondelles it is 9.29 $20 for this much here. And this is on 
I think fine. They're not out. The, the holes on these aren't as big as on some of the other ones, but the color, they're well drilled. They're pretty well drilled. There's a couple of stiff ones, like one or two on there, but they're pretty nice. Good quality. I would say this is in probably like a solid A. And I have, how many of these did I have? Four, I think. I had four. Let me mark that on there. Hmm. Two left. Mm. Yeah, they're great. I would totally look at them with pinks. That to me, it just, I think they sing. Or even like this, I would say is good with that pre night. It's not really juicy. I would make earrings because that color would look so good next to your neck. Like, maybe, wouldn't it be pretty to do pink with that? Like a pink. Yeah, you like that together, Azalea? Hold on a second, I'm, trying to, mm. I'm hunting some customers down right now. I think that looks good. All right. Awesome. Let's do these. These. Um, I'm going to do this watermelon tourmaline that can't. That's really good. I love that watermelon tourmaline. Mm, thank you. I pick that out. Have my so, so I love that so hard. These are really beautifully faceted. It's 36, 927, and I have four of them. Look how pretty. You get a good range of color through there. There's some black tourmaline on the end, a little bit of indicolite, a little bit of the olivine, and then some of this pink and red. Really pretty. Those juicy. 36. 927. So remember, I'm going to bring this up again. If you're watching this on replay, you do not comment in the comments section. If it is not, say, live, like in the red box, you're watching it on replay. And if that's the case, email either here or Azalea at four. Mm -hmm. Nice. Was Azalea at iCloud? Yeah. I can pull up the border thing again if y'all need to see it, but my thing is pretty easy to get to. It's the automatic contact on the website. All right. Get that so it's in there. You can... What is next? What is next? Oh, I have a little bit of these. I have a few of these. I did the that sunstone already. Oh, there's stuff underneath too. Holy smokes. All right, so these are some rough rubies. These are, what is that, 930? Yes. Beautiful, beautiful. I use these one in one of my treasure necklaces. These have a nice big hole, so you could, look at how big that hole is. You could easily get that on cord. Easily. So, there's only one, 930. Extra. Yeah, this color is really sweet. It's like a purpley ruby. They kind of look dusty, but you know what? As I ha I have, a, I've used a couple of these. When they get, they soak up your, I guess they kind of become more luminous and satin finish as you wear it. So I put one on a necklace because they're, they're good. All right, I'm going to do some of, we have a bunch of cast pieces. We'll see if... Oh, you already finished this off. Good job. Mm. Make some space. Away. Make some space. Nice. You guys like that sound of gemstones hitting that Gemstones. Wing? I have one of these. One. This is... Lot 933, it's $28. It's in cast bronze. It says, the mind has a thousand eyes and the heart but one. Isn't that nice? Do you remember, do you know the rest of that part, that poem? I don't, is that? That's the dude that you don't, I think it's, I, I think that's, uh, what did I write on the back is that of that? Shelley? I don't think so. Byron? It's, I don't think that, it's, uh, it's, it's like Lightfoot or something. Oh, I don't know. 
that Show kind of same me, time I period. The ones that I have strong dislike for. Hmm. Yeah, you could have won. You could have just come over. Got picked up those sapphires. <laughs> ah. All right, so that's, what is that? 933, if you're interested. One of my favorite pieces. It has holes here, here, and then one, two, three. So it is good for dingle dangling little teardrop shapes. Allison got that. Oh, Thank wonderful. You. Thank you. I think you'll like using that piece. It's one of my favorites. Oh, you know what? I'm going to sell this one next. I oh. did not know how. Azalea priced this for me. This is a ring I wore. Do you have a ring mandrel so I can tell them what size it is? There should be one handy. There should no, be one. one. There's a, we have like 10 ring mandrels. So this is one that has a really epic blue turquoise. I had this from when I was in college. I grew up in New Mexico and there was a place that my mom had jewelry made and she had this ring made and I had a bunch of them. So this is a size six, I think. Five and a half. More of a five and a half. You're right. It's a small ring. I don't think it fit me anymore. Let me see if I could get that on there. Isn't that pretty? That's nice on you. Hmm. Oh my. Oh, I got it. I got it. Got it. There was a moment though. So that's silver and Azalea marked it at 42. We're trying to get a car. We were run off the road on the Blue Ridge Parkway. And listen, that was no bueno because then my we're, we're down to one car, so we're, I'm selling a bunch of stuff in my studio. Mm. Okay, I have a bunch of another fistful of bronze over here. Oh, this is fun. Y'all might like this. Look at this. This is a butterfly wing. Look at that size. Isn't that cool? Silver and butterfly wing. Got these in Tucson, I don't know how many years ago. Years and years and years ago. $9.42. It's $24. If anyone's interested, I have one. I've held on to this one in my personal collection. All the other, the other, uh, the ones that I had collected have sold. So this is the last one. It was one I was keeping for myself. $9.42. Oh, and this is a nice little treat. I didn't even shine it up. So this is from my book, Enchanted Adornments. It's a ring that has charms, a Herkimer diamond, a Labradorite drop, some little CZs, and it's done in fine silver. Let's see what size it is. Looks like a an eight, I would say. Wouldn't you say that's probably an eight? Yeah. Let's see. I bet that would fit this finger. Now yeah, it's a little loose on there. Let's go on here. So it's from the book. Dingle Let's dangle. see. And it has those little festive little charms. It's a charm ring. It's from that book. I teach you how to do it. Enchanted adornments. What's that say? $9.45, $85 if you're interested. It's one of a kind. Although the directions are in my book. This is a book sample. You know what? I almost can't bear for this to be like, I can't stand it. Okay, I'm going to just polish it. We'll do, we could just do it in a minute. Just do it. I think that's some kind of OCD a little bit. Number? I did show it. What was the lot number? Oh, $9.45. I think I have something similar to that, but with no dingle dangles. It's getting chilly in here. You okay? Yeah. I do not feel chilled at all. All the lights are aimed at me right now, so I am very warm. Oh, you are? Can we open mm -hmm. the window again? No, it's fine. Yeah, so that has a little Herkimer diamond. Anyway, that's uh, 945. He's sleeping. Let that cat alone. He Don't bother him. Head. Don't bother that cat, okay? I'm gonna bother him. He's smooth. 
Okay, so the next thing, let me do a gemstone lot, break it up a little bit. Oh, these are pretty. This is rubies. I didn't know we had these. So this is lot 718. I have two of them and they're $50. But look at that color and quality of that stone. These are very well drilled, beautifully faceted. So you could put that on head pins. So see how free flowing? And they're gradated in different shades of pink. Oh, we got two of them. We have two, not seven, eighteen. Beautiful. I love these. Look at that. That's that has the hard sparkle. That's untreated natural. Beautiful. I tell you, I don't ever get tired of sapphires and rubies and things like that. Me neither. Okay. All right, so this I have, let me see, I think I have, I I'll don't have right five back. of these. I only have four of them. I'm going to, I'll be right back, but if you keep going, I'll be able to see. Okay, so this is lot 723. These are, these are emeralds. So emerald, ruby, and sapphire are in the same family. They're in the same family. They're just different colors. So this comes from Brazil. A lot of emeralds come from Brazil. These, I think of that as a, a nice simple cut. They call it simple cut because it's like hewn from the earth. And these have a really good color. So emeralds are expensive and they are graded by color, clarity, and cut. And in this case, we have a good, it's, it's called Simple Cut. These are pretty heavy, pretty good. You'd get, if you were to do earrings, you'd get, let's see, I would put, you get four pairs of earrings out of that. 723. I have four of these. And they're really nice. They're a good, they're like a, a nice grassy sort of, some of them are more like there's hints of more grassy here and then they're like sea foam. There's a lot of variation in these. They kind of have that, I don't know. I think of these, they don't look like anything else to me. Like when I look at them, I think emerald. Some things you can look at it and you're like, oh, could that be chrysoprase? No. Yeah, and here's some more emerald. I don't want to eat now. I'm I'm working. Azalea's like she asked for shepherd's pie. Okay, so these are little rondelles. You can see the color. These are beautifully faceted, and it's the same. You can see that the color of emerald is not like the same as like green onyx or adventuring. There is a kind of a a coolness to it. Wouldn't you say? Isn't it? Wouldn't you say it's like cooler that separates it? I don't know. Anyway, I have one of that, so I think that's gone. And I think this is the last of these sapphires. They're pretty small. They are micro faceted. They're really pretty soft. Kind of a lavender pale blue. $15. I got a really good deal on these. And so I did not, you know, like weigh it. And, you know, sometimes people will do carrot weight. And for the most part, we weigh everything. It's sold to us by weight. But I got a good deal. So 15 bucks. That's awesome. Oh, what's this? Oh. Oh. Ooh, oh. What's this? What's this? What's this? Some of these things get tangledy. Oh no, we can put them back in here mm -hmm. and fix it. Yeah, I don't know. Here's some rough emerald. This is this is from way back from Kia. I got a strand of these from Kia. They're kind of nuggets. 15 bucks, but I've had these for ages. I'm gonna mark those down. What's that say? Does that say what does that say? 546? 15 bucks. I'm gonna mark those down. Hand me a pen that, to do some markdown on that. I had these ages. This one's a, a slightly dry, but I can find another one in a second. Let's do 12 on that. 
If anyone wants these weird rough emeralds, make a pair of earrings or something with them. Which one was five? Which one was, uh, I just saw it a second ago. 576. Where's that at? It might be in front of you. Unless you put it back on the tray. I might have put them back. I got it. Oh. Okay. Oh, these are pretty. Oh, Rainbow Moonstone. Or Andelaria. This is a nice... There's only one of this. Uh, it's not showing up as translucent. So Moonstone, you don't want them to be opaque. You want them to be really clear. Like the higher quality is more clear. Like the white is less good quality. These in this light, I don't know. They don't, they're not showing up as juicy as they are in real life. So 387, 48. I'm gonna mark them. I've had these for a minute. So I'm gonna mark it to let's say let's do 38. That's pretty good. Because these are really good quality. They're micro faceted. Really pretty. So that's 38. Look at look at that. A lot of pale blue. You're getting a lot of, see that's a lot of the golden. Every one of them has shine. And that's the good part. You want to look for that. Sometimes they'll hide like the uh, the color. But by put, you know, like they'll do one juicy one and then like three no flash and then one really good one and then no flash. We went through and high graded it. So that's the other thing. I pulled off any of the ones that were kind of not great. So what you get is the high grade. Okie dokie. Oh, there's one of this. It says three. I only think there's one of it. Oh no, maybe you made like the, what is, what's going on? Oh no, that's not it. <laughs> what's going on here? What's going on? Hmm. Okie dokie. I am going to let's see. Oh. You know, I had a, a gal asking about this. So I have, this is one that was, that I had set aside. It is 38, 522. It has the, all these are pretty unique because they're, they're uh, hand blown glass. They come from Mexico. This family has been making these eyes just like this for three generations. They, they started by making eyes for the, uh, what are those saints called that are carved? I can't think the name. Y'all might know what it is. The icon? But kind of like an icon carved in wood. Thank you, Mary. <laughs> Some folks don't, they don't care for the eyes, but you know what? I, I, um, I love them. It's almost awkward how much I love them. <laughs> I mean, I do. Do you happen to see... Look at this. This is see the how this is the difference. There's two brown, these are two brown ones, but they're slightly different. Like this one has what's called a petty point setting. It's like the little bitty teeth. That's the old way they do that in New Mexico. They call that petty point. It's how they'd set that. My mom has a bunch of rings made with petty point. And then this is regular bezel wire. These are set in brass. This one, the light colors, those were reserved. So Jesus would have the blue. So let's see, I marked it. So that's 36 is 521 if you want this sort of root beer kind of cognac colored eye. What's that say? 521. And then this one, what's that say? 570 for the darker brown. That's like my eye color right there. I just had a gal message me. I have to drop off two of these in the whole food shop parking lot because she messaged me and she's like okay i was at a festival i lost my eye and i have been just sick and so i had to i was like listen i have not done a show since december so all that stuff's packed up and i went and ransacked the studio this is the other day and oh look at this micro faceted rondelles I found her too. She wanted two brown ones. I didn't have one exactly the one. And you know what? I didn't even see those. She might have liked those too. So this is 18. I'll I'll go ahead and give it a discount on this. Make it let's make it 15 because I've been hanging on to this one for a minute. 
713. Yeah, those are juicy. Good. All right. All right. Okay, I did those already. Oh, I have a clasp over here. Oh, so this is a heavy duty silver clasp. This is this is what I call if you're gonna put if you have a good strand of something fantastic, this is the clasp for that. It's solid silver. 605. It's a bird with the toggle. The bird is the toggle. It's a Azalea attached it to this side. But usually this would sit right in here. I'm going to give it a little once over with this. You can undo it. I just did that so it wouldn't get Yeah, separated. so it wouldn't get separated. Yeah, I get it. It's fine. I put this with pearls. So the reason I call I call this like a clasp that's called a focal clasp. Because if this goes to the front, that's all to the good because it looks good. You know, imagine it. Picture it. Look how good that looks. This is um, A-grade rutilated quartz. You know what? I saw this at Gem Mall. They had it marked. They were perfect, though. They, none of this. See, when you have... This is called an inclusion. When you have inclusions, that means it's not A-grade. Or, like, as... The ones that I saw were triple A-grade. Those guys, that one strand was six fifty. I just sat there looking at it. So, it was... We just... We just locked eyes, those uh, rutilated quartz and myself. That's a bombastic price for rutilated quartz, six hundred dollars. <laughs> That's you gotta be. I well, you listen. Gotta be messing with me right now. No, no, no. Quartz. Quartz. Six hundred first round. Mm -hmm. Yes, I took bombastic. a picture. I took a picture to prove it to you, but they were um they were good. All right, so this is a moon class. Let's mark this one five fifty eight. I'm gonna mark this one down. I've had it for a minute. If no one gets it, I'll just put it in one of my necklaces. But I would really hope I sell it because I'm trying to get a car. We're gonna go down to Florida because you know what? There's a, for some reason there's a lot of there's a lot of cars. Let's say what did I have it? I marked it out and I can't even see it. It was it was at thirty five, I think. Let's do it at twenty eight. It's a lot of work to make it. It's a lot of work. All right, three fifty eight. All right, I think that... Oh, I have one of these left. Is that silver? That looks like silver. That is. If this doesn't sell, so I'll keep it. Five fifty-five, twelve dollars $12 for this little silver head. It's so cute. I love this thing. You know, I make necklaces. This is what I do. It's so simple. It's so simple. It's almost... It's unreal. All right, so I will do a strand, okay, and I crochet it, like one, picture it, and then I'll put set that thing down right in there, just like that, but it's face showing. And then I'll do a couple more beads, and then I sell it for $42, I know. And not even silver. I do it in pewter, so silver is even better. All right. Oh, speaking of that, I have one of these little teeny baby heads. Uh, don't ask me why I made that. I don't know why I made it. I was making, you know what? I know why I made this. So I can't think the guy's name. It's like Shinjo, Shinja Nabaka or something. I can't think his name. Oh, the tag came off. So he does carved pearls and I wanted one of those pearls so bad, but you pretty much have to like order it from Japan. And they're like six, seven hundred dollars for one carved pearl. So I was kind of sad about it. And it's like what me and Kate, what me and Kate were like, we can make that at home. <laughs> and so I have this little, little teeny skull. And I made this to go on. So the hole is drilled from side to side like this. So you could make one of those rings if you wanted. Now this one has a little bit, if you look at the top of it, its head has a little bit of a little, the little cranial, I carved that little cranial crack in there. And some of my customized, so they had that. So if you're wondering, that's what that is. 
try to do the back the side. Mm -hmm. It's cute. I only made a handful. Yeah, I love silver. Who doesn't though, right? All right, I have one of these. 818 Luna Moth. It's in bronze. Look how good that is. You could paint that with, with paints. Now, one gal, she was like, I don't know if I can have this. I teach kids at school, and that has like a little naked lady. And I said, listen, just flip it to this side. And she was like, yeah, that's true. And then, then she got it. But she put a pearl on her. She sent me a picture. Looked good. All right, I have another. This was stuff that was in my getting ready to make jewelry with. But I can always make more. All right, so this is a little heavier, a little bigger. 931. I think I'll mark that one. That one has such a mysterious face. Yeah, it does. It does. All right, let's go 32 with this one. From 38. 931. Okay, I have one of these. Let's do the same thing. Let's do 32 on that one. This is 935. We'll do 32 on that one as well. Wow, that sound is so spooky. Mm hmm. I think it's a helicopter flying over. This is a darkened bronze. I'll give it a once over. These are pro polishing pads. They have their foam pads. You can see one side. Now, if you don't want any metal to change, you can always hit it with a barrier, kind of like that preserve your memory spray or any of those jewelry sprays work. Keep it from oxidizing. Or if you went over it with like the clear patina from vintage that uh patina paint that would do it you're just making a barrier so oxygen can't get to it and turn it a little brownish so this one is 38 i'm gonna get it to let's do also let's do this one to 32 9 38 came out good i like that one too mm. Right. Okay, I have this one. It's 18. This is kind of has a sweet face on it. There's little bitty eyes. 24. Oh, this is much more what I had it marked at shows. 24. That's the show price. And so I marked it at 18. 941. If you're interested, this one is sweet. I've made necklaces with this one with pearls. And it's a good one for younger women to like uh, maybe 13 if you do pearls all the way across. I think it has a very charming and delightful sort of look. Look, look at this size with it. Visualize that. So this is, uh, look how that looks. That's sweet. Love it. All right, I have one of this. This one says, unfold your own myth. It's a roomy quote. So. That one's popular in pewter. Yeah, this is made in pewter if you're interested. Azalea can drop a link if she is so inclined. That, that one is this is bronze. bronze. It's $18. 934. Oh, this is good. 940. Look at this bronze clasp. $12. This, this is one of my favorites. I put this one on. I only have one of these. 940. I use the heck out of this. Oh, I have a bunch of this one. I have three of these. 936. This is a little a little rabbit. Look how it's chilling in this little scene. I missed what was 940? 
It has this little design. $14. I have three of these if you're interested. We made a bunch of them. And this is what's left. $9.36. This is a good one for Easter. Let me give that a little bit of a polish. This is a pro polishing pad again. And it's good for taking off the, the top bit of darkening. And I like it. To, I don't want it to be too polished. Because then you can't see the design. 9.36 for this rabbit. Okay, I have two of these. This one is a neat one. This is a 9.37. And it's a dragonfly design over a pond. It's kind of fun to do this, but your hands get a little kind of like the black from the blackjack. We put an oxidizing compound to get the color. So this one also has that feature where you could do it this way, you could do it this way. Two of them. 937. Isn't that pretty? Has a little bud coming up there. I do. I have one of this. This is 932. This is a, a link. It says, what does that say on there? Kindness. It's kindness. $14.932. That one's cute. Mm -hmm. It is cute. 13 for this bronze button. I usually retail these at 16 on the Etsy shop when we had that. This is uh, 9.39 for 13. Yeah, mark that way down. Mm -hmm. Azalea gave that a really good price. 9.39 for this. So it looks like some folks they're bidding on the same one that night. There's only one of them, so um, that's the only drag about that. What we usually do, we used to do like a wait list, but now what I'll do is I'll just write it down because sometimes it's, um, the wait list puts people in a bad mood. <laughs> it's hard to keep up with. In a it, you know what, manner. it is hard to keep up with because sometimes things take time to make and if there's any failure on that, then, um, it's hard to explain like, hey, that casting just did not come out, did not come out. Okay, so the last of the evening, I found another one of these, and 728. These are carved rubies. This is the ruby part. I know, that's a, I got these at a very, very good price, so that's why this amount, that weight of carat is only $40. I don't have one, 728. There's two, uh, or no, there's actually, look, there's two sapphires and or four in the blue and then only two in the white but these have that floral shape they're totally sweet i would put those for sure and use those as for earrings all right that was that was um i think that was everything i got everything what was that just that last one 728 yes oh, that nice. yes all right so, I'm going to flip this camera around. Oh, okay. Can you add an email notification link? I don't know what that is. The goldfish in the pond. What are they made of? Are we talking about... Are we talking about this? Oh, no. Goldfish. Goldfish in the pond. Where's that? I'm not sure what, what, what you're talking about there, Sheree. I'm going to flip this and then I'm going to eat some shepherd's pie. Oh, Get Sharif, me. It's, if you were wondering about a listing on the website, it's going to be pewter unless it says otherwise. All right, friends. Well, we made it through like 40 listings tonight. Thank you so much. That was awesome, wasn't it, Azalea? Yeah, that was great. Good that job, was good. Mom. We did it. We still did not make what we wanted to to cover a card. That's like 
I'm gonna have to do like 10 of these, right? To get a vehicle. All right. Oh, what was I doing? We're wrapping it up. So today, if you're watching, just now we did this. This is a wool felted, needle felted landscape from the directions of the book from, what's her name? Jana Madison's Landscapes and Wool. So I did this, I showed how to use a electric felting machine. And that was at the beginning of this. And then we had a nice live sale. So thank you all for sticking with me for an hour and a half. We went for forever today. All right, friends, we will see you hopefully this Wednesday. We're gonna plan for a thing on Wednesday, aren't we, little daughter? Yeah. So that should be fun. And I'm gonna have something neat planned. Maybe I'll mount this into something. Maybe I'll have this finished and I can show how it looks mounted. We'll see. I have a few different ideas for the next one. Oh, let's get that list out, Zoya. Yes, we're going to show that list. Okay. Here oh, it is. Here it comes. Here it comes. It's good, though. It's good. Oh, yes. Happy pa St. Patrick's Day. Nice. All right. Can y'all see that? Show the bid sheet. Here's the bid sheet. I can see it from here. So. Oh, good. All right, friends. Give it a good. You can look at that over and see what's what. Now remember, Azalea is going by. We have three different streams coming through StreamYard, and we're looking at timestamps of when it comes up, so she can see. It'll have like all the bids come in from from Facebook and YouTube. from Facebook and YouTube. So we've got a few different. You know, it's coming from different locations. So just be aware of that. If you're like, hey, I saw the thing. Should be I should be first. Remember, we have to go by what's on our, what, what we're seeing on the computer. Our Wi-Fi is about to cut out, so we need to. Okay, so I said something. Wi-Fi bar is at one. Okay, so our Wi-Fi is, uh, looks like it's getting a little weak. Yeah, it's about, it's about to go out because it was doing it earlier. All right, <laughs> friends. Thank you so much for joining us this evening. We had a really good time, and we hope you join us again on Wednesday. We're going to have something planned that's pretty cool. All right, so hope you have a wonderful and creative week. Thank you. Good Thank night. You. Love y'all.